Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gaming Camper. Sorry about the glasses. The sun's bright out here and it's the last chance I had to do this video, so we're we're just going with it. But I just had to share what is possibly the best RV campground in the Pigeon Forge Smokies area. What is it? I don't know if I want to tell you because this is such a great place I might want to keep it to myself. Actually, we're at Honeysuckle Meadows RV Park here in the Wares Valley area, right next to Pigeon Forge. So Pigeon Forge, you get on the main road out here, you go 10 miles down the road and you're right in the middle of everything. You guys know I try to avoid the area a little bit. And this seems like the great, the great compromise of great RV park, tons of space. We'll get into that in a minute close to all the tourism stuff if that's what you're into but far enough away where it's like camping out here it's not like traveling in your camper this is a campground this isn't one of the overcrowded parking lots that you'll find closer to town so let's start with the amenities here number one you have huge sites i mean these are probably some of the biggest sites that i've ever stayed in this place was recommended to me by Mark Guido over at Grand Adventure, as well as Susan over at New Horizons. Those are both great channels. I suggest to check them out. I did put a link down in the description as well. But this park is five stars on about everything, okay? It's five stars on about everything. Back to the amenities. I'm supposed to be focusing on something. I can't focus because it's such a great thing that I just want to keep yammering about it okay so the sites on top of being huge they're full hookup so you got a sewer you got water you got a 50 amp a 30 amp and a 15 amp outlet that water connection even has a heat tape built into it so you can plug that in so you can use it in the winter time they do have cable tv you do have to go to the office and get a box a cable box like the uh the good old days where you had to have a cable box to get the cable to work that being said, it worked fine once I got the box. We came in after hours the first night, so I didn't have a cable box and I hooked it up and I was like, this isn't working. It's just like an advertisement to buy cable. But once I had the box, everything worked great. Verizon service, cell phone service. You guys know I'm big on that. Oddly enough, sometimes it says that I have two bars here. Sometimes it says I have five bars here. It just kind of goes back and forth. You are kind of down in the valley. But the issue with it is it works pretty good, but every now and then it'll lag a little bit. But I've got a secret. This is the very first RV park that I've ever went to where the Wi-Fi rocks. I mean, the Wi-Fi is great here. Not only do they have like one Wi-Fi, they have like four or five, four or five different access points. They don't even like have them the same with extensions on the access points where it's going to slow everything down they have different access points throughout the campground and so here at site 27 where we are we were really close to one of them and they give you the passwords and stuff with your check-in package check out these speeds like it's not the greatest compared to my home wi-fi but for a campground are you kidding are you kidding me? So another positive thing about this campground is the location. Like I've already said, we're 10 miles away from the parkway there in Pigeon Forge where you can sit in all that six lane bumper to bumper traffic all day if you want to. You can do it. 10 miles down the road, 15 minutes, boom. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. One thing I will say about the location is from our house down in the Chattanooga area coming up here, it did have me go through Townsend and take the other end of Wares Valley instead of going through Pigeon Forge. And I will caution you that there are quite a few hairpin turns going up a mountain on that side of the road. So if you come from Townsend, just be, be prepared that it's going to be a little bit tight. But as long as you're comfortable in your rig with some tight mountainous terrain without a lot of shoulder space, then you're okay to go that way. If you're not, you can always go through Pigeon Forge because it's a little curvy from here to Pigeon Forge, but it's not bad. Nowhere near as bad as it is the other way. Let's talk about value. I mean, for something that I've said has so many positives. You got all this yard space, beautiful views of the mountains, 
open fields everywhere. Wi-Fi. It's got to be like expensive, right? Well, I'm going to tell you that the prices here are pretty cheap compared to a lot of the ones in the area. They're a little bit more than what I tend to spend. I try to stay around $30 a night. The price varies. The last thing that I looked at said between $40 and $45 a night, depending on the time of the year. So I'm doing $40 a night for three nights. That's really not a bad deal, especially considering everything that I've said already. Don't tell them this, but people will pay twice that much for this kind of amenities. Also, they could put double the amount of campers in here and still have more yard space than they do at a lot of other areas. Don't tell them that either. They do have a fishing pond and a pool. Now that is kind of across the road. Um, it's on the other side of the campground from where we are and it's across the road. So that is there and it looks to be like a really nice area. Nice place to hang out in the summertime. I noticed the deep end was only five feet deep, but it's a really nice pool down there. Well, let's talk about a few cons. Everywhere has to have some cons, right? This place has a couple. They're not really big. Once you actually figure out what's going on, it's not too bad. When you turn in from Wears Valley Road and you go to the office there, you kind of do a double take. I ain't going to kid. You kind of do a double take because you think that you're pulling into one of those other places in Pigeon Forge where your campers are lined up right beside each other because they're like, boom, 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 boom. But the truth of the matter is, is that they have some long-term RV storage that's right next to the office out there. They have three rows of campers out there and they're not anywhere near where most people are gonna be while they're camping. And so it really doesn't affect you it actually helps kind of camouflage this place because when you drive by, you're like, who wants to stay there? But if you don't ever drive back in here, you won't ever know how great it is. One other downside to the park is that they don't have an online reservation system. They do have somewhere where you can like start an online conversation, like an inquiry about your days that you want to come and hang out in the park. Um, but they'll respond to you by, I think it was email, and then you gotta call them and, and work it all out. So it ends up being a phone call, which really isn't that bad, but I do just wanna say, I usually don't do places a lot without an online reservation system, but this is worth it, worth it. All right, so let's talk about sites. You guys know I'm all about giving you sites that are better to stay in in places. I'm gonna tell you that there's like basically two small loops here. Um, there's one large one here on the eastern side of the campground, and then there's a smaller one on the western side. I want to tell you over here on the eastern side, on the large loop, I'm at site 27, which is at the bottom of the loop. All of these sites are pretty much great. All the ones at the bottom, you have beautiful views of the mountains. The top of the loop, it's a little bit more wooded, so I will say you're not going to have as much views, but you do have more privacy. That being said, it appears that a lot of those sites at the very top are like seasonal sites as well. So all these sites are great. I want to tell you that the two best ones, in my opinion, is site 30 and site 42. And that's mainly because they're kind of up on the hill, but they're not back in the woods far enough where you still have the beautiful views and you can look out over everything. I will say 42 is a smaller site, and so you need a smaller rig to stay there. But pretty much everything else is pretty wide open. This is pretty... Pretty big rig friendly, I'll tell you that. A lot of the sites like this one here in 27 is a pull-in site, which is only an issue if it's muddy. Um, there's, the sites are made for this to be the front, even though traditionally you would be backing your rig in a site like this. But all the hookups and everything are on the other side. And I noticed when I came in that everybody else's rig was pointed this way. And it's just because that way you can have your front door here at the mountains. The biggest issue that I ran into that was only that it had uh, rained cats and dogs the day before we got here. And so there was a little bit of a muddy area in front of my truck, which is where apparently somebody had a hard time getting out due to the rain the day before. I would avoid sites 31 and 48 because they're in a semi-circular loop, kind of like a buddy site. I would also avoid sites 49 through 51 
just because they overlooked the trailer storage area. So all in all, like I say, this is a great place to stay, a great place to visit the Smoky Mountains. And it's not too far from all the shenanigans down there and Pigeon Forge, if that's what you want to do. Now, if you want to do more like camping, this is your place. If you travel in your camper and you basically you're going to be out the whole time going to shows, doing shopping, all that touristy stuff, you might want to stay down there closer to one of those campgrounds where everybody's kind of huddled closer together if you're not going to be outside very much and you don't mind that. But personally, I'd much rather be out here. I think this is probably the best campground that I've been to so far in the area. We've got a few more coming up this year. So we'll let you know and we'll divvy them all up at the end of the year and say where we preferred the most out of anywhere. But I have a pretty good feeling that it's going to be right here. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.